kind of lucky with this axle. Back a few months ago, we built a budget 400 horsepower rear axle. We went through this on a budget rebuild, stuff that you would get at the parts store. But one of the main things that we did in that video is we tack welded our tubes. And that's one of the major issues we're having right now with the black car. You probably wonder, well, you put this axle in, why is it back on the floor? Let me explain. When we took the black car to the dyno over TI Dyno, and then we took it to Backstreet, we were doing some dyno comparisons. We ended up making about 400 wheel on the 387 Stroker. Right? But when we put that axle in, it had a 327 gear in it. Knowing gear ratios can change a little bit of the dyno number, we decided to put the 355 back in it just for that very reason. So like I did in the video here with the building a 400 budget, we're gonna build a semi-budget 750 horsepower rear axle. Prior to modifying my 8.8 axle in my Mustang, there was a couple things I probably should have done before we actually put it in the car. Tires are lasting pretty good for all those burnouts that we've got. I've always been pretty impressed on the size of the wheels being a 10 and a half inch wheel in a 315, 35, 17 tire, how well it fits and how well it looks on the black car. This axle is only temporary, so it's not gonna take us very long to swap this axle back in. As we're gonna be disassembling the axle and we're gonna see all the carnage that's inside. <clears throat> With our muffler swap videos, they're gonna be a pretty easy transition. Gives us a chance to check out our mufflers. Look like they didn't shift at all. Next muffler video though, I'm gonna tighten this up here and then weld all around that. So that sleeve is still there, but I mean, I know it was bent, but like it got worse. Real quick, take a quick check at some of our torque boxes. These are some of the things that need to be welded. Back here and back here. Just a little tip of the trade. We got this little tool we made, hard line brake line bracket. It's just an old hose and it keeps it from getting the floor all brake lined up. Hey, at least we have a lift. Could you imagine doing this shit? Ready? Like we used to? Yeah. Remember when we used to be on the ground all the time? Oh God. Dude, it was, it was miserable. I know. Getting this lift was probably, it was what, 1500 bucks? Yeah. This is probably one of the best things we've ever invested in. I wish I could get a second one in here, but at least we got one. You know what I mean? I did order some fittings for the white car's other fuel system. I'm not I'm not taking it off the back of the tank. I'm leaving it there. I'm just taking that stupid loop out of it. All right, guys, I think that's pretty much it. We got these two bolts and nuts to get out of the upper control arms, and we're ready to bring it down. And all them burnouts gives me a chance to actually check these. I just put these in recently, rear uppers and lowers. Dude, that looks worse than when I took it out the it first does. time. This old axle has definitely been good to us over the years. Consider it was turbocharged for a number of them and add a thousand wheel torque. It'll definitely twist some things up. But now that it's naturally aspirated, it's time to start fixing what we should have done before and reinforcing for possibly better another day. Even for cars with not very much horsepower, do these mods before you have to turn around and do them again. Otherwise, this axle would have never came out the first time. 
So one of the things we never actually completed on the budget axle was changing the brake lines over. So we went ahead and took the old one off and it's already pre-fit. But we don't keep our cars in the jack stands around here. At least we try not to. So we got to finish this axle up, get it in and get the car mobile. Okay guys, if you made it this far in the video, you guys know we did a 400 horsepower budget axle rebuild, whatever, but you can see what we're kind of doing here. This is more of a 750, 800 horsepower, like where you're upgrading past the 400. We're talking 31 splines. I do have a spool in there, but we're talking 31 differential, like a Cobra diff, an Explorer diff, whatever. But we'll get into that here in a second. Eventually we're gonna build the Coupes axle and that's gonna be more geared towards an 8.8 thousand wheel. We're doing this in transition so I can bring the content to you in the channel. We're gonna take the differential cover off. We're gonna take the pinion and gears off and the backing plates. And this is a C-clip eliminator axle. You know, some of these things I wish I would have upgraded when it was time, you know, when we originally changed the gears and put it in the black car years ago. But again, at that point in time, we were only making about 450 wheels, so it didn't really matter. Now we got a couple axles that we can use as donor. We got another 8.8 that we're going to take to get welded up on the tubes. It's a nice bare axle. Just like our exhaust, we've been saving some axle housings over the years. We've got a couple of them still left in good condition with caps so we'll end up picking one of these housings or another one so when we go to do the part two of this actual series it's going to require us going to the junkyard we got some teamsy uh, parts that are going to reinforce one of the axles but we're going to save that for the reassembly i'd be surprised to see how much gear lube's actually still in it from all the i mean it's literally would leave puddles on the ground for like overnight it was crazy Dude, there was no diff fluid left in this thing. Go ahead and bring the nose up. Oh, I guess there was. I guess there was some. It wasn't too bad. You can see I had a spool in here. That spool life on the street, though. Yeah, yeah. Hey, pick it up. One of them fell off. Looks like it broke off. That's not good. Mm. Now this is, these are the caps that I gotta be careful because these actually go on a very specific side. To take this axle out, all I gotta do is unscrew these C-clip eliminator bolts and this whole axle will slide right out and this whole dip will come right out. So it won't take us very long to take this apart, but there was definitely some fluid missing for sure. I'm actually surprised it had that much in it for how much how, how long we've neglected that. We're gonna basically take all this stuff out of this axle. Let's literally start a new axle over again. I don't think I'm all that confident right now with how much we've bent this axle. Right, so C-clip eliminators, block of aluminum, whatever, that gets pressed onto this axle. These are old C-clip axles that I, all I did was just basically put the C-clip eliminator on it. This is all part of the brake system. Now, now before, this would be bolted up and then you would have C-clips inside. The channel what we might do is do a rear disc conversion and all you really need is a V6 or V8 SM95 bracketry and this is what this is right here this could actually go right on my fox axle if i wanted it to when you're trying to make 650 700 750 uh, c-clip eliminators because if you bust your axle at least it's not going to come flying out of your car it'll keep it keep it into the uh, housing itself you see on my white car we, these are actual big torino nine inch ends so they, they'll actually replace this whole flange with a heavier duty axle end and i have these on my white car with 35 spine and they should be good to a thousand but again we're going to do that on the channel so we're pulling out the other c-clip and the one thing that i want to look for is to make sure these axles aren't bent especially this one make sure they're not damaged i mean they've been through a lot of war with us but spines look pretty straight you know running a spool on the street not a problem been doing it for years We've actually blew apart an eating diff here on the channel, making about 750, 800. It just didn't like it. That's why we kind of went to the spool at that, that point. car. Went this car, so. You know, like we were talking about, it's kind of nice. You can just pop it. Sorry. What did you do? <laughs> <laughs> That's strong, bro. I'm just trying to pull the... <laughs> Sorry, that guys. That is not something. All right, so there's your... 
now it's the shim so we can tell what sides they are i want to keep these together in the rebuild and check those as well and we did have the original ford 355s in here these tubes are only like pressed in here and these need to be welded probably shouldn't have ran a spool on the street without welding my tubes up but again it's just one of those things i wish i would have done before i actually started adding more horsepower to the front of the damn car so, so we always make use of these little freezer bags and we make sure that well, we're taking, you know, axles apart. Wow, I think I got kind of lucky with this axle. I'm gonna be honest with you. That's not even 20 pounds. Ooh. Right? It's all them burnout, baby. You want to always check your flange inside for looking for like when you take this off to see if it's got like a ridge on it that'll cause a leak okay so we got most of this assembly done i mean this stuff was just coming out but looks like our gears are still in really good condition we'll probably run it again take the race out and figure out the shim but i'm gonna run the solid crush sleeve if you guys don't know what i'm talking about we're gonna be talking about that in a rebuild i think that's basically as long as we check backlash and make sure everything's good I think the crush sleeve can, can just be torqued down, if I'm not mistaken. I mean, but it's clearly obvious that it was leaking from here the most, the mm -hmm. tube. And you can see it's bent right now. Pretty bad. More on the passenger side, it's bent towards the rear. With a spool and 31 spline axles, it held up pretty well for what it's done. So a couple things I wish I would have done prior to putting this axle in when I made like 300, 400 wheel or whatever. Guys, if you're going to build a 8.8 axle, like we're going to cover when we put this back together with a different housing, is I'm going to show you some of the steps so you don't have to go back through like I did and do it over again. If you've already got 31 spline axles, you don't really need new axles. You can still use the original C-clip axles. But welding the tube, probably wish I would have done. This brace helped out keeping it. Otherwise, it would have probably fell apart. So at least we braced it. We could have done a rear disc at that time. We could have went with 9-inch ends. We could have just stayed with an Explorer diff. Now, this is an Explorer diff from the junkyard. I don't know how good it is, but we may use this one anyways. And you can see it's a 31 spline. See that? And this is one of those junkyard mods. You know, $100 carbon fiber pack, 31 spline, differential. Make sure you guys get the pin too. We're gonna to end up heading back to the junkyard to pick up one of these. And I'm gonna take you along for that video and show you what you're looking at. Cause you can not only get a diff, but you can get a gear set as well. All right, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I know it's got an information. There's a lot of things in there. It might be a little bit boring for some people, but I just want to try, you know, if, if there's somewhere I can help you and help somebody make a decision when they're building their Fox Body Mustang or just building an 8.8. We're always trying to help people on the channel get their shit out the jack stands. Never have time to do it right the first time, but you always have time to do it again, right? But there will be a part two and probably even a part three to this as we're gonna be assembling the 750 horsepower axle for the 8.8. .8, and then we'll do the 1,000 horsepower one another day. Let me Leave me a comment below, let me know what you think. Appreciate you guys for watching. But check out the join button below as the members get exclusive content to the channel. Appreciate all my members, appreciate all my subs. We'll see you soon in the next video. Thanks for watching.